Let's look at a few more examples of factoring by grouping. There's one last scenario that we have to consider. We know that when we see four terms, we do want to try factor by grouping, but it's possible that the terms aren't in a good order for us to do factor by grouping. If I try with this example, I'm pairing up the first two and the last two just as is. In the first pair, we have a GCF of 2, and left in parentheses, we would have 6x squared, and from this term dividing by 2, we'll have negative 5y. From the second pair, we have GCF, well, we can't divide anything from the coefficients. We might see that we have a difference in parentheses here. We know that the quantity in parentheses has to match up, but it looks like our only common factor is x. We can make that negative, but left in parentheses, we'll still have 15y minus 8, and definitely we do not have a match, so we should not try to go further with factor by grouping. But let's go back to the beginning of this problem and try to rearrange the terms. And what I've found is that the only thing you have to do to rearrange is swap this second term with the fourth term. If rearranging will help, then just swapping these two is going to put it the way it needs to be. So if we pair up the first two and the last two this time, we can find a GCF from the first pair, 4x, in parentheses, 3x plus 2. From the second pair of uh, terms, we have a GCF negative 5y, and in parentheses from this first term, we'll have 3x, and from this last term, we'll have positive 2. And now we see that we do have these quantities in parentheses matching. So that will be one factor in our answer, and the other factor will be made up of these two, 4x minus 5y. Now, rearranging won't always work. If we do rearrange, we swap the second and the fourth terms, and we run into a similar kind of problem like we did initially, then we can say that it cannot be factored with grouping. But in this case, rearrange did work. Here's an example that you can try. So pause the video, try this problem, and then restart. We'll look at the answer together. You might have seen that in this example, if we try factor by grouping with the terms in this order, that it does not work. We had to do a rearrange. I swapped the second and the fourth terms, and I rewrote it 8x squared plus 14xy plus 12x plus 21y. And now factor by grouping. From the first pair, we have a GCF 2x. We will have left over in parentheses 4x plus 7y. From the second pair of terms, we have a GCF. We can divide both of these coefficients by 3, and that will leave us with 4x plus 7y. And we see that these quantities in parentheses match, so we can continue. Those uh, matching quantities become one factor of the answer, and the other factor, 2x plus 3. I'd like to show you two more interesting examples of where we can use factor by grouping and we're used to trying factor by grouping when we see four terms, but it can be used with more than four terms. We have six terms here. What we have to do to do factor by grouping is make sure that we are grouping terms in equal sized groups, so I'd have to group maybe two and two and two, or I could do a group of three and three, but equal sized, and I also need to look at these terms to see if there are any clues here about how they should be grouped. With these terms, I'm maybe beginning to see a B, C, D, and then again a B, C, D. And that's suggesting to me that we could group these into two big groups of three terms. Now remember, what really tells us whether we can or cannot do factor by grouping is, is, is if once we pull out that GCF, we need those quantities in parentheses to match. So let's give it a shot and see if that happens. From this first set of three terms, we need to find a, a factor common to all three. Let's see, from the coefficients, we can divide them all by two, and it also looks like there is an A we can take from each term. So a 2A out front for the GCF. From this first term, we'll have 4B. From the middle term, dividing out 2A will leave us with just this negative C. And from the last term, dividing out 2a will leave us with 2d, positive. 
How about from this last group of terms? Do we have a, a common factor that we can uh, divide from these coefficients? 12, negative 3, and 6. We can divide each of those by 3. No common variables in these terms, so leftovers, 4b minus c plus 2d. And we have a match. We can continue with factor by grouping. This 4b minus c plus 2d is one factor in the answer, and the other is the 2a plus 3. Here's one final example, and it's a similar kind of problem to the one we just looked at. You can pause the video and give this one a try if you like. In this example, the grouping that I chose was three groups of two, because I see A, A, and then B, B, and then C, C. That's how I'm seeing the grouping here. Now our approach is still the same. With each group, I'm looking for a GCF. From this first pair, looks like 3A, and that will leave us with 2X minus 5. From this middle pair, no numbers from the coefficients, but a b at least we can bring out front. That will leave us with 2x minus 5. So, so far so good. We have a match with the 2x minus 5. We'll definitely need to see another 2x minus 5 show up here. GCF, well, we have an issue with signs, so let's make it a negative GCF. And we can divide out a 2 and c. And that will leave us with the positive 2x and minus 5. So the 2x minus 5 becomes one factor in our answer. And just like before, we would use these GCFs as terms in our other factor. And we're going to do that with this one also. It's just going to be made up of three terms, 3a plus b minus 2c. Remember, we can always check our factored answers by multiplying back out. This distribute will have to do 2x distribute to 3a and positive b and negative 2c and then distribute the negative 5 to 3a and b and negative 2c. And we will see these six terms as a result of that multiplication. And that's how we can check our factored answer. If we multiply and get back the terms we started with, it's a good indication that we factored correctly.